Welcome to PuppetConf. Um, I made some changes. I gave this talk a while ago. I thought Service Pack 1 was appropriate. Um, so I, well, I could see before the lights were on me, but how many people are here for the first time, like little blue lanyards? All right. So that's kind of awesome. That's a, that's a huge number of people. Um, it's PuppetConf. My first year was last year, and uh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, a couple of days where uh, I can only sum it up, it's like Puppet Nerd Christmas. You can find tons of great people around here. You can learn tons of great things. Uh, if you don't leave here with half a dozen new things that you want to try as soon as you get some time, um, you're probably doing it wrong. So by all means, like reach out and uh, not grab, but maybe gently prod somebody and ask questions. And uh, people are here to kind of hear your woes and sympathize and maybe give you ways around it. So. Um, with that, on our way out last year, there was one thing that I had a little disappointment with. Uh, to give you some context, I came into Puppet solely in the Windows space, which is weird and unicorny in its own right. Um, and so all of my experience up to a certain point was just writing for the Windows stack. And so when I came in here, I learned a bunch about other things that I wanted to try out. But um, you know, the puppet was talking about last year. Windows is a first-class citizen, and Windows is a first-class citizen. Um, then there were demos, there were some talks, and they were mostly like, you can put the agent on, you can play with the registry, uh, puppet everybody, and and to me that was like, that was baby steps. That I I put servers into production with Puppet. Uh, they had not broken, so I thought I did it right. And that was one place where I thought about I should be able to take more away from this than I did. Um, I did then, with my frustration, what any man my age would do. Um, I went to Twitter and uh, just, I don't know why it was kind of silly, but in the process met a lot of interesting people um, that also shared some of the pain points of trying to start automation with Windows that wasn't like a messy set of batch scripts and PowerShell and, and kind of hoping and praying you could get some sort of state enforcement across the entire architecture. Um, I think part of the challenge of that comes from enterprise. Uh, Windows is primarily an enterprise product. Uh, with that, I, I found a quote. There was actually, uh, if you'd believe it or not, a Windows DevOps conference in England recently. And there was a good quote here that I will steal. Uh, it was a conference for battle-scarred enterprise IT folk, a conference for those wrestling with DevOps in a world of legacy systems and enterprise licensing agreements, uh, which was kind of touched on a little earlier this morning. Uh, I, I think Luke had mentioned just awful software that you have to deal with. Uh, with that, I've spent time over the last few years in the enterprise, in different places, talking to people and trying to uh, get Puppet going on Windows and, and see why we can't and see how we can solve those problems. Uh, and part of the things that I've seen I'm going to be talking about today. So uh, one of the bigger things is with Linux versus Windows. Uh, there's a little asterisk here. So for the, the remainder of this conversation, uh, corporate politics or whatever you have between departments, we're going to put that outside. Uh, it is nothing but like DevOps rainbows in this room. So your company is completely all fine with all of this and you're moving ahead. Uh, in, in the Linux environments I've seen, unless you're replacing a uh, 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 much worse configuration management product uh, that was maybe implemented improperly, uh, you have a little more leeway. It's a little easier to get going with Linux. Uh, it, it was written initially as a Linux tool, and then support was added on for Windows. So uh, you tend to find it's easier to kind of corral off uh, starting to try these things without having to worry about connecting to Active Directory and uh, having access to your network resources. You can start building and being more effective. Uh, you could use the Trinity of like package file service, and you can do a lot of automation in Windows very, or in Linux very quickly that way. Uh, whereas with Windows, you already kind of have some structures that may be implemented well, maybe a little fuzzy. With uh, Active Directory OUs, you kind of have 
uh, security policy enforcement with, with group policy, depending on how it's implemented. Um, but part of the, the problems in bringing this stuff into Windows is it's bigger than just that. You tend to see things like PowerShell is huge. Uh, Microsoft is getting repeatedly not so subtle in saying you need to know PowerShell. Since it came out, it's like, hey, there's a neat thing, and then more and more and more and more you see as it goes along. Uh, to be really effective at automating things on the Windows side, you need to know how to do some things with PowerShell. Uh, there, are, there is a wide range of what you can do with PowerShell. For some people, it's been essentially advertised as commandlets. Uh, here's how you can create a new user very easily. So a lot of people, their only experience is in that way, in doing commandlets. And in certain silos of Windows, it's an all-in-one server tool, and there are modules that run very things. So if you're an Exchange admin, your PowerShell experience can be completely different than a guy that's trying to stand up boxes. Um, so that is part of the, the bigger driving points, even before you get to Puppet. If you're not comfortable with PowerShell and how to drive things that way, when you try to funnel it through Puppet, it's not going to work out so well for you. Um, the other issue there being a lot of people love their GUI. Uh, a lot of people have had long, illustrious careers just clicking on things. Um, it's just truth, because Microsoft designed a GUI so you wouldn't have to unless you needed to do really advanced stuff. Uh, so you have uh, these large enterprise Windows teams that are, are varying points of knowledge on how to actually do any automation on the Windows side before you talk about taking it a level up and, and looking at the infrastructure as a whole. Uh, so with that, a lot of people, when I talk to them about, hey, maybe you should learn PowerShell, usually come back with that. Uh, why do I need to do all this stuff? And part of that uh, I can explain with the uh, default install behavior of server 2016 currently. That is uh, essentially server core. And server core has been around a long time. It's not widely used. Uh, but to sum it up, it's headless Windows. Uh, you have not all of the services you get with Windows because they've chopped the GUI off. So you have a smaller install base. Uh, you know, it's a smaller image. You have less patching. Uh, you have a more, you have a lower attack surface because it's just smaller. It doesn't have all these extra things hanging out there. And uh, all of the management of that, now if you want to cheat, you can go build a management server and start using a GUI again. But the intent is to start driving this with PowerShell and command line tooling and hopefully get that command line tooling ported into working through PowerShell so you can be more effective in, in driving the management of these things and, and really kind of apply that, uh, that cattle analogy to how you're treating your Windows servers. If it doesn't have a face, it's a little easier to kill it. Um, <laughs> Reestablishing this, uh, I'm going to show you a screenshot of Nano Server. Uh, that's pretty cool. So Nano Server doesn't have a console. It doesn't have anything. Your only way in is going to be through PowerShell direct into the image. Uh, they're not fooling around here. <laughs> uh, it, it gets rid of things like uh, you know, the, all the backwards compatibility and the, the little nuisancey things that you might have with Windows. And it's just forward thinking Windows at its best there. Um, and I think in the next, you know, when they get this stuff released, you're really going to start seeing uh, more adoption of this, hopefully, and with configuration management, it's not going to be as painful as you think it would be. Uh, so you really do need to get to this point as a Windows administrator where in the future, if there is no GUI, it's not a problem. You can do all your management and configuration tasks straight out of Puppet w using some PowerShell and get these things done. Um, I keep bringing up PowerShell, and it's just, it's the magic word. It's going to keep coming up, so bear with me. Uh, the question, why use Puppet with Windows? You have just learned PowerShell, and you have like 50 scripts that you can run in various places that can automate things pretty well. Uh, for me, in the, the places I've been where I've seen it effective, uh, it comes down to applying these DevOps philosophies and methodologies into your infrastructure. Uh, using them together, you start having common tools. You get to use things like Factor to know everything about your systems, but now you know everything about your systems at data center scale. You're not thinking about the kernel anymore, you're thinking about things holistically. 
you can use Hira to set values globally for things that may consume for any kernel regardless. Uh, you can start using common code techniques. So the way that I've always pushed uh, people into writing manifests would be to take uh, is all the conditional logic for your uh, application, put it into Puppet as much as possible, and use PowerShell as this little scalpel at the end of it. So the, the smallest, most direct way to get PowerShell to make things happen on the box through the PowerShell provider usually gets the majority of the work done. Um, with it, you also have the common workflows. You start building between teams. Uh, they can start actually contributing in the same way and speaking the same language. And, and when you can start doing that, you can actually work together easier. Uh, an example of that is to being, being able to extend code to your customers. Uh, and a place I was at, we worked on this, and it worked out fairly well, surprisingly. Um, we, as an operations team, work with Puppet, and we can build with Puppet the base profiles for whatever the application standards are. This is a base uh, Windows OS. This is what it should look like. This is what a web server should be. Here's all your IIS and .NET installations. Uh, and we can hand that off to the customer, and you can delegate Hira. Uh, you can set it up as we did in such a way where, hey, you can just supply a YAML hash of IIS hosts, and it's going to go generate your site. Or if you want to start getting your hands dirty and playing with this Puppet stuff, feel free to start contributing code. You don't need to know about the base profile if you don't want to, but it's all there. It's all transparent. Everybody can actually see what the full stack of this application is going to look like. Um, so with that, uh, you can kind of see versus this. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. You can correct me. Uh, have you seen a lot of developers contribute to like group policy or SCCM before? No, okay. Well, one guy kind of. Eh, okay. So uh, with that, you start seeing a way to actually like bring dev and ops together. That's an interesting word. Uh, win ops. I like that word, so I'm just going to steal it for the title. So Microsoft is not stupid. Uh, you in the room in the room probably would have differing opinions than like any of the Linux tracks, but um, with every new version, they, they come out, they, they make automation easier. They understand this problem. Uh, it's a big ship, but they're moving faster and faster, and, and they're starting to see things work better and better. With that, the state enforcement and the rapid deployment and all these fun things that you want, they're here. They're, they're still getting worked around a little bit, but they're here, and they can be applied, and they can work in production. Uh, PowerShell, again, is a way of life. Um, it is something that you are going to need to know if you don't, and just learn it well. Uh, with all of that, and, and bringing this all into shape, we can start working all towards the same goals as, again, teams with common tooling and workflows and all of that. So you, you've got all the corporate buy-in in your Rainbow DevOps uh, environment. So what do you do? Uh, the first thing, uh, I'm a big believer in, in standards and documentation, and uh, enterprise is not a good place to go for that, but uh, I have my little torch I carry. I uh, like to call it minimum viable windows. You need to decide as an organization uh, what are you going to support. There is a lot, I'll actually show of hands, how many 2008 servers in your organization? All right, how many have 2003 servers in your organization? Yeah, how many have 2,000 servers in your organization? We're getting lower, at least. And NT4. Oh, OK, there's normally one guy. That's really sad. Uh, <laughs> and that's just it. Uh, I've, I've tried 2003 with, with Puppet and had to make a conscious decision that I didn't want to ruin my life that way. Um, 2008 kind of works. Um, part of what really matters even more than the version of the OS is the, the Windows management framework and the .NET framework. Uh, PowerShell relies on the .NET framework. There are scenarios where you can try to install PowerShell 4, but not have .NET 4.5 installed. And then you're going to have a wonderful scenario where you swear you installed that update. It says you installed that update, but you're still running PowerShell 2 on a 2008 host. Uh, these are the things that you really have to determine, because if you are writing PowerShell into Puppet Manifest, and you have incompatible versions of PowerShell on your infrastructure, you're going to have unreliable results. And that's not what this is about. After that, 
uh, you need to get Puppet on the box. And I've seen many different ways that that works. Uh, now you should know that double clicking is not the approved method of installing anything anymore because we're going to do it without a uh, GUI. Uh, locally, a lot of people processing just writing a little script to do the, uh, to run the MSI, uh, pass some parameters to it and get it done that way. I've seen a lot of people attach that and use it as a run once. So you're provisioning from a, an image, it comes up, the first thing it does is it's going to try to install Puppet. Um, I have a friend here actually that is a big fan of, of remote PowerShell and, and remote execution and um, watching somebody update like 100 Puppet clients in a shot is a pretty cool thing to do. Uh, with that, I tried to pull these all together. I have a little Forge module I've been working on that I just put up if you want to try to break your infrastructure with it. Uh, called WinAgent, it's for Puppet Enterprise. But just to give you an example of what you can do with it, um, what I wanted to do was solve the problem, uh, that's an annoyance for me, uh, but that's good passion for anything. Uh, my annoyance was that for Linux, you can curl the server and you can get your, your agent. Um, and a lot of people use that method to install the Puppet agent. It's very easy, it's relatively reliable, as long as you have the firewall ports open, you're good to go. However, the, the Windows agent does not fall under that category. Uh, so with this, it actually ties into the PE repo class and adds the MSI. And in the files folder, there is actually a local installation script to help. And there is also a PowerShell module that you can apply to do this remote execution. Um, I just, I'll go back. I really like that install puppet thing. That's just my favorite. Uh, with that, you're looking at a PowerShell host. You're looking at this idea where you may need something that's able to touch once and configure many if you can't get Puppet on the box yet. Um, this is kind of an ongoing thing. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the uh, kind of where this sits in line with everything. Maybe something with the orchestrator eventually invalidates this entire concept, um, but you still have a zero to Puppet problem, and this is one way that you could look to solve it. Setting this up as your remote execution host, adding it to your trusted host so you can actually remote into boxes, and then you can go ahead and make any changes if you need to prior to having Puppet on there. Uh, now you have an agent installed and you are ready to get going. So let's talk about how to start building in Windows. Uh, we'll start with the community. Uh, I did this stat last time I talked and I just updated it. That, that little one is Windows. Um, there are a lot of modules in there and I know some of the metadata is probably wrong on some of them so this number shouldn't be awesomely accurate. Uh, there are very few Windows modules. And when you look at them, there's actually some really good ones out there. Puppet Labs has done a great job of like really bringing in a lot of the, the key building blocks to get started uh, with using Puppet in Windows. Uh, a lot of the other ones tend to be geared towards components. And uh, this is where Windows gets a little weird and where I think we have a namespacing problem that we need to address. Is essentially you have all these little one-offs like configuring ports and enabling things. You have uh, like local policy, security policies. If you wanna move away from using group policy, you can set all those things, but for each one you're gonna end up writing registry resources. So uh, if you've ever done a base profile for Windows, you probably have about 500 of these sitting in manifest somewhere. And uh, it, you need to start breaking it down and cleaning it up a little bit. And how you do that and structure it, I've seen some people do like a super module, so you have like Windows settings and then all these things underneath of it. But how to actually maintain a module of, you know, a thousand manifests might be a little trouble after a while. Because um, you're looking at this, these are the, you know, and, and local security policy, all the things you can enable that are just little switches in the registry, but you need like five lines to make any of that happen. And uh, I don't have an answer for that I'm out there today, but I'd like to start the discussion if anybody has any ideas on it. Um, so, until that really gets solved, you're, you're running into this issue where, yes, I can stand up a box, I can put IIS on it, I can put a SQL server on it, I can drop an application on it and have it run, uh, but those foundational things that you do with, with Windows, 
Uh, those are, there's still some manual steps, so there's still a lot of reliance on group policy. Uh, it's very much possible to make Active Directory just a really neat user database, uh, but there's a lot of work that needs to be involved to get that into your configuration management. So the rest of the stuff you're going to build outside a registry is normally going to rely on the PowerShell provider. Um, it's really inessential, and again, there's that word PowerShell that keeps coming up. There's many ways you can shake it, and I'm going to talk about a couple of ways here and a couple of other tools that you can use that also rely on. There we go. And uh, so let's kind of go through those. We have the you know just standard exec. Uh, you can use template function to do some things. Uh, if you want to get really clever, you can start writing custom providers in Ruby. That is uh, not a space that I think exists very much. Uh, Chocolatey is great for doing package management if you are ready to take that step. And then there's desired state configuration, which everybody always has an opinion about. So with the PowerShell exec, uh, you're basically just shoving PowerShell into a command and putting an only if or unless on there and running it through and seeing if it works. And uh, it's, it, it works. Hey, you can run PowerShell through Puppet. Uh, but it is kind of a step above dropping a script on a server and having that execute. Uh, so trying to find a more elegant way of doing this, you start running into issues where now every time you want to run this, you're actually running PowerShell twice. And if anybody has ever built a, a big, like full stack uh, configuration of a Windows box, you'll see like minutes and days and weeks and years go by as your Windows features are validated for the millionth time. Um, so in that, uh, one of the other, one other catch that I find on it is you can't send, if you're setting up variables in PowerShell, they're two separate sessions. So you're not sending information between the two of them. You have to duplicate a lot of code. And as, as I was taught, you're not really supposed to duplicate code. <laughs> if you're duplicating it, you're probably doing it wrong. So with that. You can try using the template function if you want to get a little more PowerShell-y and just have Puppet as the control mechanism for how to deliver that. Uh, the good part is you can start using uh, like Ruby ERB. I haven't tried it with the EPP with the, the new stuff. Uh, I assume it'll work the same way. But this way you can actually drop values from, say, Hira, your manifest, anywhere factor. Uh, and have them put into the PowerShell script. So you do get some customization of that script when it runs, and you don't have to actually do uh, an artifact drop and then hope the thing has permissions and goes correctly and all that. Um, so it allows you to get a little more diverse with what you're doing with PowerShell and a little more simplified in, in what you have to type into Puppet to get it to actually go. Uh, next step, custom provider. I, I did this just to see if it would work, and it was kind of fascinating uh, experience but essentially, you're using Ruby to run. What's the word? OK. Um, and with that, you're able to do more with PowerShell prior to having to run 75 different PowerShell sessions to get something done. Uh, as an example of that, this was like I was playing with Windows Feature, trying to build it into a, a proper uh, provider here that on the plus side, the first thing you get is you can actually have it create the resources so the, the Windows features show up as a Puppet resource. And because of that, you're not running PowerShell as much when you're validating things. It's checking against this, and it actually makes the runs go a lot faster. Um, so this is a great way. This is kind of where development would go if uh, Microsoft had no solution and all the configuration management companies wanted to completely automate how Windows was going through Ruby, which sounds insane people. Um, so with that, let's talk about, let's move on to Chocolatey, because I don't want to talk about Ruby anymore. <laughs> um, Chocolatey is package management for Windows. How many people are actually using it? How many people want to use it? Are too scared to try? OK, there's Forge modules that get you started very quickly, and it's not anything to be scared about. Uh, it, it helps you move your install logic from your manifest into a package. Uh, it's good for doing things. You know, I, I tend to use it when somebody hands me uh, a zip file that needs to be installed with a bunch of extra configuration. Uh, it can handle that really well. It's very easy to stand up your own private feed server and start maintaining packages that way. Uh, it uses PowerShell. So once again, if you're good at PowerShell, 
you can be good at using Chocolaty. And in modern versions of Windows, there's going to be native support. Uh, the uh, package commandlets that are coming out, I think it's in five framework, um, they actually will attach to any NuGet-backed resource, and since Chocolaty is using NuGet, then uh, you can actually use your Chocolaty feed server and install packages. It's kind of neat. Uh, how to use it, or how to assess where you think you can have a need, I kind of distilled it down to this. Uh, how many of you have written uh, a Windows module that simply installs an application and that's it? Okay, enough of you. If you're doing that, that that's a package, that's not a module. Uh, that's a good case to make a package. If you're going to actually configure something, that's a good place to make a module. Uh, Next up, desired state configuration. So you'll see similarities. Um, they do steal from the best. So this is, is it's kind of a debated point about, uh, is it redundant? Yes, it is redundant. There are many things you can do with Puppet that you can do with, with uh, desired state configuration. Uh, it's kind of up to you if you like it or not. Uh, kind of what I've learned in my experiences with it, it's, it's pretty good if you don't necessarily want to learn Ruby and start trying to do all that provider stuff there. You can write PowerShell providers if you know how to do PowerShell, and you can be very effective that way in what you're doing with desired state configuration. You can utilize Puppet Lab's DSC module so you still have all the fun common tooling and collaborative stuff that I was talking about, and you can just have this going that last mile. Uh, I believe it's very soon will be a supported module, uh, but there's still like that gray area of if it's passed everything correctly to DSC and DSC is not working, now you need to know DSC as well. Fortunately, DSC is made with, okay, thank you. Um, it's also, you know, it's good for getting into the hard to reach places. They'll show you there's a, a demo in the pavilion um, and they can show you how DSC has some additional features that, like say for a user resource, uh, the, the example was, hey, well, with the DSC resource, you can actually tell it to uh, prompt the user to reset their password when they log in. Yes, you can do that with Puppet with a bunch of extra stuff in your manifest. It may be easier in this case to go that way. And uh, on, the, on the downside, it's still kind of in preview. You need the Windows Management Framework 5. Um, some of the providers are experimental, there's a whole gallery of other providers you can get, and so you do have to balance now that you are going to be using Puppet and you are going to be using DSC, and they both have providers and modules and all of these things, and how are you going to make sure that those stay in line with each other? Um, both from talking with people at Puppet and talking with people at Microsoft, these will eventually work much better together. <laughs> it's, it's not the intent to just kick something out and leave it out there to get old. Um, so I think as you move along, if you start learning these things now, it's going to kind of evolve as you do and it's going to get very, very easy to start really ramping up what you're doing uh, with Desired State Config and Puppet. Um, so just uh, wrapping up, this Coming in last year and feeling like we were taking baby steps with Windows and seeing what's happened in the last year is, it's, it's amazing to see. There's, uh, they're starting to just kind of narrow the divide and at least to me seeing the way to success with driving configuration with Puppet and Windows uh, kind of comes down to this trinity of, of using Puppet, uh, utilizing PowerShell and optionally the, the DSC features and then using Chocolaty to actually have a package management system and be like, a big boy operating system. Um, so with that, uh, talking PowerShell, if you aren't good at it or you're scared at it or you don't know anything about desired state configuration or any of those things, uh, I have some resources. I can post them, what, there's Slack rooms, there's Twitter, you can come find me, I'll post the deck, whatever. But there are places that you can go. Um, if you've never heard of the Microsoft Virtual Academy, it's uh, actually a fantastic website. It is uh, Microsoft doing videos on just about all of their products. And there are things from just tip of the iceberg to technical deep dives on how to just get you a little more comfortable with how to do automation on Windows and, and start using Windows in a new way. 
Uh, if you're in the Seattle area, I help with the Puppet user group. Uh, we have a meetup there and there's a link. Uh, we're in Seattle, we're so close to Redmond, I think I could find more Windows people, but I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, and then one big last reminder, you are at PuppetConf. As I said at the beginning, uh, you're here to learn something, and I think it's kind of hard not to. So I hope you have some good takeaways over the next couple of days. Um, there are plenty other Windows talks here. Rob's going to be doing a talk on Chocolaty uh, later today. Uh, Travis Fields will do one on, on developing Puppet uh, on Windows, and he did a bunch of stuff with Puppet Labs. I believe did the SQL module. Um, and then, this, okay, again, a good example of, of getting past baby steps. Microsoft's here to actually talk about how you can use Puppet and PowerShell and desired state configuration and just kind of tie this all together into one happy package. Um, so this is really an amazing Puppet Conf if you are on a Windows track and you really need to start doing things. Uh, there's people here, they're, they're all excited, and they, they, it's time to start automating. So uh, with that, if anybody has questions, feel free. Any questions? One question. Is, uh, is using the DSC provider, is that going to open up a Hello? PowerShell uh, Take it in. exit session <laughs> anyway? Like the same as like, if you were just running any PowerShell script? Uh, there is some stuff. It's doing some generation with the MOF file. And that would probably be an awesome question for the guys over there that are doing it, because they helped write it with Microsoft. So <laughs> I, I haven't been able to pull apart the guts of it yet and quite see how it's making everything tick. But um, it, it does seem to take as long as doing PowerShell stuff when I've tried it. So um, your mileage may vary. Another one. Do you, do you have any opinions or experience on the relative sanity of using Puppet to manage a desktop environment? And also, if anyone here is managing a desktop environment with Puppet, I'd love to talk to you. Um, I've tried it in my home life. And uh, that's where package management comes really handy. Uh, again, like if you're using a package manager, setting up that desktop and, and sending some configuration to it tends to go very, very quickly. If you're doing all these MSI uh, you know, one-off installs and trying to find things in their various sources, then you're still going to wait three days for the configuration to finish. So I got the basic idea that 2008 is uh, 2012. It's still out there. But no, I mean, how, how, what's your experience with that? Does it work fairly well? I stick well? to 2012 and, and uh, okay, 2016 so I've been playing with right now. Those have been working well for you then? Yeah, okay. yeah. As long as, like, out of the box, you have a better version of PowerShell, you're able to do more uh, automation through, mm -hmm. through 2012 than you'd be able to do with 2008. And most things I've seen ported over tend to work relatively seamlessly. It really depends on how the uh, .NET application was developed and <laughs> see if it, how well it works. So. so are you deploying your new stuff in your work environment with a Puppet? Deploying to... Yeah, uh, so in other words, like you're building new servers now. Are you actually using Puppet to do that? Yes. yes. Okay. And how many? Have you done uh, so How far? many now? Yeah. I'm actually in a new position where we're just standing those up. So. Ah, okay. In my last uh, position, we, I think it was a couple thousand nodes. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? All right. Oh, hey. So I heard recently the Chef has made some overtures, or Microsoft has made overtures towards Chef, uh, including bringing Jeffrey Stover, who's a Microsoft Windows Operating System. Yeah. Uh, so I could Jeffrey do helped write the DSC module, I believe. Um, they, I, I, I was, I actually went to the Chef meetup in Seattle where they were very proud of like just finishing up work with Microsoft, uh, where they were going to start doing it, and then it was uh, probably what's going to essentially be the DSC talk <laughs> of how you take everything you want to do in Chef and just kick it over to DSC. Um, so they, I think Microsoft is, uh, you know, I'm not affiliated with Microsoft or Puppet, but I know Microsoft just kind of likes, they, they have everything running over there in some form or another, uh, whether by choice or by acquisition. So they are kind of playing nicely with all the different configuration management tools and trying to get them working, trying to get them 
working in Azure so you can build what you need to do with what you want to use without having any issues with it. maybe uh, playing with Azure or like as a DR or as a development uh, environment? I do all my, uh, my development in Azure. Um, so depends on who you talk to about Azure. <laughs> People have varied opinions. I've had no problems with it. I like it very much. But then again, I'm not necessarily driving things to production in Azure. It's a nice playground for me to build a lot of different things and break them in hilarious fashion. Um, I've, I've talked to production people that love it. I've talked to production people that hate it. So really a matter of what you're working with up there. Do you use Puppet to manage that? Yes, that's, that's my oh. Puppet playground. So. Have you ever tried um, Installing Puppet on a VM that's provisioned through the Azure PaaS, like when you deploy code from Visual Studio into a staging or production um, cloud service? I haven't done that with Visual Studio, per se. Um, I had images I built that, well, the first version of that agent installer that I had, I had actually burnt the script into like the run once to try to get going. Um, that seemed to work just fine. Now I just use the remote install and target everything and upgrade it and install as needed. I think we're okay. Anybody else? Anybody? Thank you.